good. I just need a drink, guys. <laughs> Was that your eye? Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm actually changing it to Fitness Tuesdays because I'm here to support you in your fitness New Year's resolutions by making a fitness themed cake, obviously. Like the saying goes, just cake it. You know, this t-shirt's a bit tight. That's why I got started on my New Year's resolutions. Let's get started making these cakes. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, make that part of your New Year's resolution. Hello, number one, then fitness. To make these fitness cakes, I used a total of 12 pounds. There's gonna be a lot of pounds in this interview, I think. 12 pounds of vanilla cake batter. For my six weight plate cakes, I used eight and a half pounds of batter. For my dumbbell cake, I used one and a half pounds of batter, which I divided into two four inch square pens. For my kettlebell cake, I used two pounds of batter, which I divided into two halves of a five inch sphere pen. I made them all vanilla, cause you know, it's less sinful than chocolate. Lies you leave, you <laughs> Now my seven inch and eight inch round cakes are gonna become two weight plates each, so I cut those two in half. Time to carve my weight plates. They actually just need a slight carving, which I use scissors for, and I trim the top edge and the bottom edge to be a little more rounded. I do this to all six of my round cakes. Now it's time to carve each end of my dumbbell cake. I made a template of a hexagon, and I used this to cut both of my square cakes into the shape of, you guessed it, a hexagon. Now I need to make a few more cuts to make each hexagon cake look three-dimensional. Did you guys think this bottle was just for simple syrup? Take it to the gym with you. Using my Italian meringue buttercream, I'm gonna crumb coat all six of my weight plate cakes and the two ends of my dumbbell. Crumb coating just ensures that all of the crumbs are really stuck to the cake so that I can get a cleaner finish once I ice these cakes. Now onto my kettlebell cake. I need to place a little board at the bottom of the kettlebell, so I flip one of my half spheres over, and I just slice off a little, little bit of cake to make it flat, and then I secure a really small board about two and a half inches with a little bit of white chocolate to my cake. This way, when my kettlebell is complete, it can stand upright without toppling over. Then I fill the inside with my Italian meringue buttercream once again, place the other half of the sphere on top, and crumb coat the entire ball. I need a moment, guys, to address something. I have totally seen all of your comments. Like, I don't Netflix and chill, I crumb coat and chill, and I love it. Future t-shirt of 2016. I'm gonna ice all of these cakes one more time and chill them. Ice and chill. For the weight plates, before I give them a final ice, I need to cut the center hole out of them, the one that the bar goes through. Here's a cute note, no matter how big the weight plate is, the hole is the same size. I did a lot of fitness research. I feel fit just reading all of that. I think you're supposed to actually like lift the weights. Yeah. Yes, Miss Jocelyn. <laughs> I'm gonna start by decorating my weight plate cakes. Weight plates are not flat on the top. They have that raised edge and the raised center. So I'm gonna create that out of fondant. I start by rolling out some black fondant. I take the same cake pan that I baked my cake in and trim it perfectly into a 12 inch circle. Now I place a 10 inch cake pan on top of that piece of fondant and make sure it's perfectly center and then I mark around the circle. I take a sharp knife and cut out that circle perfectly. Now I have to cut a three and a quarter inch circle out of this 10 inch piece of fondant and then create a hole in that circle with a one and a half inch cutter which is the same cutter that I used to cut the hole in my cake kind of like a fondant donut. I'm talking about donuts in a fitness video. This is going good. I want to cover the inside of the hole that I created in my cake, so I'm going to cut a strip of fondant that is big enough to do that. Put it inside and then gently use my fingertips as well as a little rolling pin to sort of push it against the inside. 
that's exercise, right? That, yeah, I think that works. I your think shoulder. so. Yes. Or your elbow? I'm not sure. It's more, uh, I feel like it's a whole arm movement, okay. actually. Now we need to apply the three and a quarter inch round circle to create the raised center of the weight plate. I need to trim the edge of the 12 inch circle of fondant because the weight plates are kind of rounded at the edge. I'm going to repeat this process on the other five weight plate cakes in their corresponding sizes. I am not a quitter. Can I stop doing this now? I make sure to roll out a piece of fondant that's big enough, drape it over with a French rolling pin, smooth it out and cover it. And I really use a fondant smoother to smooth that fondant on the top up against the ridges that I've created. All of my weight plate cakes are covered and lined up. It's time to make them a little bit, you know, metallic. Just cake it! Just cake it! Just cake it! I'm gonna go to the gym and wear this. <laughs> To create a metallic finish on each one of these cakes, I'm going to mix together some black pearl luster dust, some matte black color dust, and some silver highlighter. I'm going to mix it all together with some clear alcohol, and then I'm going to paint all six of these cakes. They need to look like what are they, whatever weight plates are made out of. Some sort of metal. Some kind of heavy metal. Because these cakes are round, I painted with the grain. And when I painted the top, I really made sure to run my brush around and around. And don't forget to paint inside the hole too. Now it's time to add poundage. Poundage? I think the point of working out is to not add poundage. Oh, you're right. <laughs> time to label my weight plates with the correct weight. I roll out some gum paste thinly. I use my tappets to cut out different numbers and some L's and some B's. I apply each of my gum paste numbers and letters with a little bit of clear piping gel brushed on the back. My weight plates are looking great. They are workout approved. It's time to move on to my dumbbell. I roll out some beautiful indigo colored fondant into a rectangle and cut it in half into two squares. Then I use one of those squares to cover one half of my hexagon cake and I trim it really neatly. I flip it over and use the other square to cover the top half of the hexagon cake and trim it and create a nice clean seam. Hexagon! Ooh! Now I want to roll out some fondant to create a band to cover the seams on both of these hexagon cakes. So I roll out a piece of fondant that's long enough to go all the way around each hexagon cake. I cut out two bands from my fondant and use the band to cover the seam on each one of my cakes. So now what? Now I need to cover, so don't use this. <laughs> they don't know how tired I am. My two year old son doesn't care that I spent 14 hours making cakes and it's his New Year's resolution to continue not caring. So now we need to create the bar that's gonna connect these two hexagon cakes to create a dumbbell. I do this by using a hollow plastic dowel, I brush on some clear piping gel, and then I roll out a piece of fondant and wrap it around that dowel and cut it and trim it. Yes, everyone, the bar is not edible. And if you find out a way to make edible floating cake that floats in the air, suspended between two cakes, please leave a comment below and let me know. Not every single element of a novelty cake can be edible because cake is heavy. Now that I have all of the elements of my dumbbell cake, I'm going to paint them before assembling them. I use a mixture of a gorgeous purple and a gorgeous blue luster dust that I had, diluted with a bit of clear alcohol, and then I paint both hexagons as well as the bar. Time to assemble this dumbbell. First, I trim the fondant that is on my plastic dowel. Then I mark the center of each of my hexagon cakes. Now I push the dowel down into one of the hexagon cakes, flip it up, add the other hexagon cake, and it's a dumbbell. My dumbbell is way cuter than you are. It's metallic. Now we can move on to the kettlebell. Before we get to the cake part, we want to make the handle for our kettlebell that will land on top of the sphere cake. I roll my gum paste into a tube that was about 10 inches long, and then I take that floral wire and gently run it through the middle of the tube. Once the wire has poked out on the other side, you'll want to now 
bend this gum paste tube so that it will fit on the top of your sphere. Once my handle is dry, I'm going to paint it with some silver highlighter. I just rub some vegetable shortening onto the surface of my handle and then with a dry brush, I brush on that silver highlighter. Our kettlebell handle is complete and now we have to get our cake ready. Because this is a sphere cake, before I cover it in fondant, I'm going to wet my hands and smooth out any ridges in my buttercream. I've decided to cover my kettlebell in a gorgeous orangey red. It's very fitness. It's very like, go get them color. Just cake it. I start by using my handle to make a mark on my cake where the handle will be inserted. Then I roll two balls of fondant and place them on those two marks on the top of my cake. Now I roll out one big circle of my fondant to cover this sphere. I always get nervous. I have a fear of spheres. Say that five times sphere fast. Fear. Sphere fear. Sphere fear. Sphere fear. Sphere fear. Sphere fear. That's hard. That is a workout. I managed to succeed and the cake is covered. When I added my handle, it wasn't quite as neat as I had hoped, so I trimmed away the excess fondant and now I need to patch this sphere. I create a fondant paste with a little bit of my leftover fondant and some water and I just water it down until it's the consistency of royal icing. Then I use that paste and I ice it into any grooves and creases that I've left behind on the sphere. And all my sphere fears are gone. Final touch for this kettlebell cake, I am going to roll out a little bit of my fondant and cut two little bands to wrap around the base of the kettlebell handle. I'm gonna conquer my sphere fear in 2016. New Year's resolution. What other resolutions do you have? Number one, I would like to hit a million subscribers. And I need your help. And number two, I wanna be on The Ellen Show. So if you guys could help me out with that, that would be great. Tag Ellen, tweet, yeah, tweet, tweet Ellen, snap Ellen. Do they say that? No. No, you no. don't snap snap? Email her, just basically harass her until I get on her show. Sorry Ellen. Sorry Ellen, I love you. These fitness cakes have me feeling closer to my fitness goals already. I've already made a promise that for every bite of cake I take, I'm gonna do five reps. That is my promise. I am committed. You are. I'm going to just cake it. When Jocelyn said last year, Yolanda, you should make a turkey cake for Thanksgiving. You know what I did? I just caked it. When you guys asked me for a Star Wars cake, you know what I did? I just caked it. When you guys asked me for a hamburger cake, you know what I did? I just caked it. Just cake it. <laughs> You know, you know, it's actually the year of the cake. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Hi, Ellen. I'm coming for you. I'm gonna just cake it. What kind of cake would I make Ellen? Oh, here come the comments. <laughs> They're rolling in. They're rolling in. Had a tough workout. I know you're feeling dehydrated. You know what you need? You need water, hydrating water. But don't just drink it from a bottle, drink it from a simple syrup bottle. You'll miss your mouth every time, but you'll still be refreshed. <laughs> just cake.